what's up guys, I'm Brian, this is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is on the LG G3. I just spent about eight hours hands-on with it as I just got back from Value Electronics. Robert Zone will be doing the introduction and the unboxing and then we'll do all the demo material and discussion. But I will tell you, I was absolutely blown away. I released a video yesterday on LG being the dark horse in the battle between QD OLEDs, S95C from Samsung and the A95L from Sony. That LG was being a little quiet. They were being a little, eh, a little shy. Wow, they were just being stoic. I'll say that because I was blown away by it. Now, what's interesting about opening a TV at Value Electronics, especially today, is that just to set the stage for you, you'll see it and you'll see it in the environment. The G3 is actually surrounded by an 85-inch Z9K, 85-inch 900B, 83-inch A90J, and then a 97-inch LG G2. When something is unboxed in that environment and still blows you away, you know it's something special. The G3 with the micro lens array technology is amazing. I saw it at CES with their demo material and I will tell you that that demo material did not do justice to what I saw today in the finished product. Even things like the picture wizard and the new operating system and the new menus, which I thought was a lot of market speak, still was really impressive and something I'll actually use, which I'll show you throughout this video. This video will be very long. I could easily chop it up and give you several videos, but I'll be going back there this week to show you some gaming, both on PC and on consoles, but I could not wait to come home and just shoot this intro for you. I was blown away by it. Now, quickly, before I go into the video, um, it's shot in a bright room, and then the second part is in a dark theater setting. When I came out, um, I made up my mind that I'm actually going to wait to buy a new TV until next year when this technology passes on to their 83-inch lineup, which I hope is the case. But it impressed me that much that I'm not looking to buy anything unless something else blows me away. But for what I saw today, guys, you have a lot to be excited about. And here, I'll tell you right in the beginning, unless whoever you're listening to has seen this, it needs to be seen. So when you hear about leaks and what this person said, just let somebody who has actually seen and spent time with it tell you about it versus shooting it down, because I'm telling you, it was that impressive. All right, without further ado, Mr. Robert Zone. Here we are with good friend, owner, and founder of Value Electronics, Mr. Robert Zone. Robert, how are you, my friend? Thank you. All is very well, Brian, and so thankful that you invited me back to the channel again. This is a very exciting day for our industry as well as everybody who's viewing here today. So we have LG's very first G3 delivery, and we got a nice shipment in. Um, this is one of them. This is the 65-inch Gallery Series G3. Every year, as everybody knows, we get nice incremental upgrades and enhancements in both processing and in panel development. This is one of the biggest years ever. They developed what's called micro lens array, which is millions, literally, of static lenses that sit in front of each red, green, and blue subpixel, and they enhance the peak lumens and they enhance the color volume. So the color volume gets boosted along with the peak lumens equally. So you have full color volume at high luminance levels. Uh, that's one of the bigger improvements. The panel is also changed, and there's a processor in the panel that's changed, which manages how it does its uh, panel refresh. Those cycles will be shorter, and um, they'll be more efficient. So that the, the panel refresh has changed, the algorithms have changed. The processor is also changed. This is the A9 Gen 6. And boy, did it take a big upgrade this year as well. So um, scaling of low resolution is much cleaner. I've spent a lot of time with this TV and with the product management and engineers at LG. So I've learned all the inside technical information 
about every detail of what's happened this year. The integration, believe it or not, I can't believe I'm bragging about this next item, but they've integrated with their new sound bars to use all the TV speakers at the same time to give you a bigger sound stage, especially for the center channel, and to also uh, use all the dynamic range performance of each and every speaker to send the right content to each speaker. There's a special um, new algorithm that uses intelligently with their AI processing each and every one of the speakers to give you an accurate Dolby Atmos. They have a new 3.1.3 Point three, meaning three up-firing channels. Uh, audio receiver, the SC9, that pairs so beautifully with this TV and is on a promotion right now as well. Uh, they have uh, so many new audio enhancement features. Well, Robert, I'm glad you brought up the micro lens array in terms of color, not just peak brightness. That's, That's been right. the, the narrative is brighter. But color, being able to compete with what's out there right now is what I think is most exciting. This is our very first collaboration of 2023 for me, Robert, and Value Electronics. Robert, thank you so much. Let's get this bad boy open very good. and see what it can really do. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, guys, for those of you that are familiar with LG's interface, you're seeing the big changes in the home page and also the shortcut menu that we saw at CES. This is one of my favorite changes to the G series, and obviously it'll be here for the C series as well. Showing you how bright it is in the showroom, we have windows everywhere. We can put to bed right away the reflection handling of the G series. This, you can't have these TVs in a bright room is being disproven right before your eyes. This is straight out of the box. Now it ships in standard, but it's eco modes are still enabled. I'll show you where you disable those, but this is straight out of the box. Standard is not the brightest mode. You'll see that throughout the video, I'll be showing you different modes and different content 
throughout. Again, this is one of the brightest rooms you can possibly film in. There is a skylight above me. The reflection handling is excellent. The TV is bright enough to block or at least keep that uh, reflections from being out of control. And the sunlight does not raise the blacks from what I can tell. Out here in the open, the blacks are strong. Picture looks absolutely stunning. As you saw from the unboxing, the same as the light above, the same silver bezel and trim goes around the body. The back is all metal. You have this carbon fiber print on the back, which looks exquisite. The Santa stand is something that we use at Value Electronics that you can buy there if you like, where you can adjust uh, any TV to any size or any height, I should say. The G2 or G3 and the G2 did not come with stands other than the gapless wall mount. You need to order the stand separately when it becomes available. Look at how beautiful that looks in that bright room. Lights on, sconces on, sunroof, <laughs> skylight, whatever you need. The G3 is behaving amazingly. I'm going to misspeak many times. It's about 4 a.m. as I edit this. I'm editing down about six hours of footage. Get around to the back of the G3. Again, very premium, all metal and glass. You see the HDMI ports here. We have four full bandwidth HDMI. Beautiful design. Seems a bit heavier than last year's G2, but don't know that for a fact. Now I'm showing you here where the AI service menu is. This is the sneaky eco mode that you need to go ahead and disable. But going through them, I want to be able to show you the OLED care and a lot of these settings. Now there is all kinds of talk about not being able to get into the service menu and disable ABSL and ABL. If that bothers you, it really is for the protection of the panel but I did not notice any dimming in the six to seven hours where I was filming it. Now I was there for about eight to nine hours, but six to seven pure filming, very bright material, did not notice it dimming at all. Also didn't notice any raised blacks. You can see in the YouTube menu how dark it is and how clean it is. As we're going through the OLED care menu now, the sneaky one you'll see at the very bottom is energy saving. Now, anytime you do any TV from any manufacturer, the eco modes are typically a couple different eco modes. The SDR settings on the G3 also have an auto disable mode as well, or an auto eco mode. You'll see that on the presets when I show it to you. But I found the G3 to be ridiculously punchy, vibrant. Special shout out to Jennifer Gala and the HCR Super Channel. A good amount of the demo material seen in this video in many of my videos is Jennifer's. Her work is exquisite. You'll also see an audio portion showing the sound ability of or capabilities of the G3. But most of the footage you're seeing here is hers. Check out her channel, Jennifer Gala, and also her secondary channel, HCR Super Channel. Jennifer, thank you as always for your amazing work and your team's work. Now you're gonna see me do this several times throughout the video, showing you the different effects that the different presets have. Now what I find uh, fascinating is that the vivid mode here which we put on several times to show you how bright the TV is doesn't seem to be always the brightest and most saturated I'm sure that it is when you drop down to standard the standard mode has a depth to it that typically standard doesn't have cinema home and cinema are both extremely bright and then filmmaker mode is where I'm gonna remain through most of this video. Now filmmaker mode is extremely bright as well. Now there is no calibration being done. We will do that in the upcoming weeks. We also have a live stream all day event with Stop the FOMO, not this weekend, but the next weekend we'll be comparing the G3 to the S95C, the G2, 
and any other TV that's in the showroom. I love this expression feature. There's a lot of different little enhancing. You'll see them throughout the presets as I go through them. Little things that they've added, but look at the depth of the image. Now I'm only going through these settings not to change them, but to simply show you the little differences from the C2 and the G2, C1 and the G1. Little things that they add that make a difference. Now keep in mind, I'm still in this very bright room. Towards the 18 or 19 minute mark, I'll be in a dark room, the theater room in the back portion of Value Electronics. Again, special thanks to Value Electronics for allowing me to spend this much time with the G3 in their store. Please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Check the description below for all of their information. Ask for Robert and or Wendy. And special shout out to their daughter, Leanne, who is they're one of the three that run the store and she's awesome and she does all the assembly of the stands and the unboxings and everything she's awesome now going through all of the presets again painstakingly showing you now i don't want to just show you because the presets behave differently depending on the content we'll be jumping through hdr content as well as sdr sdr content i was very impressed with like the other c series and g series you have more uh, presets when you are in SDR, but you can see here that you do have a personalized picture setting, which I'll show you how to do that later with the wizard um, setting to help you with the picture quality for personalized. We go into game mode. One of my favorite settings is game mode and this personalized picture pro, which I'll show you later. Going through game mode, again, I'll show this to you guys uh, later in the week when I bring the PC or the consoles. What I love about uh, what they did last year and again this year is letting you also go into the advanced picture settings while in the game bar, where on the C1, you had to actually do some of it here and then go into advanced settings and then into all of the settings here. You can do them all. I'll show you in a second that you can actually go into each one without actually leaving the main blade of the game bar. Gaming is a huge part of what LG is bringing. And again, showing you a paused HDR image. There is no dimming at all. And as I sit here for a minute or two going through the presets, you can see the differences in depth with each preset. But I love that when you get to filmmaker mode, it doesn't all of a sudden dim down. Now, I'm sure when it gets calibrated, it'll get a bit darker or a more dim. But each one of these is super, super bright. Love the way these images look from Jen. We can see how bright they are. What's interesting about filming the G3, it reminds me very much of filming a very bright LED. You're trying not to tone things down. You're not trying to hide anything. You're trying to leave ISO and, and things open. You'll see how blindingly bright some of these images are. No motion problems at all. And you'll see with this content as it goes from different colors, especially here when the bird flies up you'll actually see like a blinding bright light at the top of the screen catches you off guard right there boom and then many of these demos are extremely familiar to many of you but i've rarely seen them pop like this especially on an oled now as robert mentioned in the intro that the um mla is not just about peak brightness, but also about color. And it shows here, it is very rich. Everything pops. We move here to SDR, which can typically be dim on OLEDs at times, isn't. And I'll show you those presets as well. You'll see them better than me as I'm in the editing process. 
What I love about what LG does is their flexibility of image. What I mean by that is the ability to make the image look however you like. You're not just limited to uh, this looks this way, this looks that way. You can change it, make it look probably this year more than ever as the presets are many are very different from one another. Very saturated. I'm sure you can tone all of that down. Now, I should have said this earlier in the video, but OLEDs do push cool on camera. If things look a little blue, that's what you're seeing. Now we are in the darker portion of the theater now, just to show you that the black level. Now I should say also we're in filmmaker mode for most of these, but there are no lifted blacks. There is no screwing with the camera. This is how it looks. You still have the delineation. There isn't a grayed out, even if I wander into Vivid or any of those other settings. What I think is fascinating about the G3 is that typically when I film these OLEDs, you have to put it into like a Vivid mode or standard just to show you a little bit of pop so you guys can see what it can do. Didn't feel the need to do that here at all. Vivid is actually um, almost not needed because all it is is it's bright, but it's very cool. Well, the rest of these are just very bright. You'll see them calibrated uh, during our live stream in a few weeks, what stopped the FOMO, but you'll also see them do battle here, um, uncalibrated before we'll have John Reformato, uh, shout out to John to calibrate all the panels involved. But look at the depth, look at the detail how clean it is. Now also 65 inch G2 struggled with their uniformity uh, in a lot of cases. Don't see that here. Full field white, there is no pink. I didn't see any macro blocking or any, um, any issues. Moving here to more vibrant content. Again, I'll bring up the menu so you can see me go through all the presets. Now I love this shortcut menu here love it i'm not sure if i mentioned this before i'm late to uh talk about the framing of the g3 still that thin metal should have talked about that earlier and the remote is exactly the same as last year which is why i showed them together i'm sorry it's very late or very early i'll label it The silver bezel is not really visible in a dark room. It is very minimal. Beautiful content, but it just really shows the richness of color. So the fear for the G3 was it would simply pump the brightness, pump the white, and then lose the black level and perhaps lose color. I was assured at CES by LG that the MLA would increase color volume. Um, they're not going into particulars on why that is, but if you look here also in the white, there isn't anything washed out with the image. You still have the contrast ratio and micro contrast ratio, but the color just pops. Now here's Jennifer's sound. I'll shut up and you can hear it.
Now, quickly touching on the sound portion, the AI sound option, being able to be enabled right there instead of being in the Picture Pro AI service menu is great. Now here, the personalized picture wizard is one of my favorite parts of this, even though I kind of didn't pay attention to it at CES, I was like, ah, what's the big deal? Being able to choose these different images to your preference. From here on, as you see me choose my preference, which is more punchy, more detail, uh, less washed out, the picture modes you'll see in the last few minutes will be my personalized picture modes based on this picture wizard. I love this. Now these guys are, uh, shout out to David Park um, from CES and LG showed this and I was like, eh, I'm never gonna use it. But like, much like the game bar, I'm telling you, I'm gonna use this right away. Love its functionality because unlike the AI picture pro, which learns the algorithm as we move on, this is immediate. So you're not relying on an algorithm to learn things like trees and leaves. You're actually putting it in place now. Your preferences are recorded. As you see this, the analysis is in progress and you can choose. Now it looks subtle here. It's actually not that subtle. And there is the personalized picture mode there and you see it in the menu. So when you go to that shortcut, you'll have your personalized picture pro vivid, You'll have standard, cinema, cinema home, uh, game, and then filmmaker mode. And when you go to SDR, your preference will still be there, but it will go act accordingly, meaning it won't stay at HDR settings. It'll reduce down to an SDR. So the OLED backlight will drop, the contrast ratio will drop. So it is awesome, very intuitive, and very smart that it knows to jump from each picture mode. I thought I'd lose it with SDR, which I'll show you here. But like the game bar, something that you're like, eh, that's something that's market speak. Next you know it, you're like, oh, I need that, have to have it. I think this is something that everyone will eventually do. Because again, it's not some learned algorithm. It actually is something you can see. And once you create, now it's no different than, than doing custom on other manufacturers but being able to pick it that way, very cool. Now quickly we'll move into a quick SDR demo to show you the colors and show you the pop. And now we're in that personalized picture setting here. Now I'm not sure if it changes the color temperature much, but I didn't go back in and check that again. We'll see a, um, a what's it called we'll see a calibrated one soon and actually with this part we're actually in isf dark if you can imagine i did change that so you have isf dark isf bright and dark was probably the only preset obviously that was dark or dim and even then it's really bright but then again, you're seeing this look this bright because I'm in a completely dark room. Uh, the 29 minute mark, I'm blown away by the G3. I've said that several times. It was, uh, what's interesting about it is I had very high hopes for it and there's no way it was gonna meet it, but it reminds me very much of seeing the Z series for the first time with all that richness and gradients. However, it is bright, very bright, very beautiful. Oh, here we are. I think we're moving into the filmmaker mode here into the ISF. There it is. Okay, sorry. This is the darker mode here. That was ISF bright before. And then I'm going through them here. You can see the differences. Everyone has a preference, guys. You guys like certain things. Some of you are stickler for accuracy. Some love non-accurate. I'm in the middle. I like pop, but I like some accuracy. I don't like craziness with processing but this TV can do it all. I cannot wait to see what it does with gaming and how it matches up against the QD OLEDs. But what an amazing day. Again, I was there for so long and it just flew by. And trying to edit down around six hours, seven hours of filming to a 30 minute video. So I apologize that it's long. 
Again, as we leave here, special thanks to Robert, Wendy, and Leanne of Value Electronics. Special thanks to Jennifer Gala for all of her amazing demo material. Really beautiful. Let me know in the comments what you think. I know this is a long video, guys, but there wasn't any of it that I wanted to shrink down. I am a discussion-based channel, and... Uh, I want you to feel like you're there with me, like you're going through that ride with me. When I'm at that store, it's a kid in a candy store that's in a toy store and a uh, amusement park. That's how much I enjoy it, and I want you guys to have that feeling and feel what it would be like to be there this long with a camera and with a remote. I think you guys would be there longer than me. But I can't wait to show you what it does in gaming. I think HGIG is going to be amazing on something this bright. But absolutely stunning. Any questions, give Robert a call at Value Electronics. He'll be very happy to help or email him. Let him know that I sent you. If you like what you saw in this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And this is just the first video of many. Again, we'll be doing the 77 inch. We'll be doing comparisons with Stop the FOMO in a few weeks, but you'll see the G3 many more times on the channel. This is just the first TV of the year for me to show you. And I will say the very first TV is one of the best TVs I have ever seen, if not the best TV I have ever seen. It's that good. Look at that, man. Super impressive. All right, guys. Have a great day. Great night. Love you guys. Take care.